is where it is, right? This is the DeWolf Family Cemetery. This is the funeral mound of James DeWolf. It's hard to muster much sympathy for the lack of dignity in this for someone who engaged in slave trading and on that kind of an epic scale. James DeWolf Perry is referring to one of his great grandfathers, buried here in Bristol, Rhode Island. Katrina Brown, his cousin, is a direct descendant of the DeWolf family, too. James DeWolf and his extended family brought uh, more than 12,000 enslaved Africans across the Middle Passage and are probably responsible for about half a million people who are alive today in the Americas descended from those who crossed the Middle Passage on their ships. The Middle Passage refers to the sea journey of ships from West Africa to the West Indies. So one of the great ironies of Rhode Island is the fact that we are founded under religious freedom, but we soon enter and dominate the enslavement of human beings in the African slave trade. And even churches were involved. The church, particularly in Rhode Island, profited directly from the slave trade. But in a more direct way, we own slaves. We had clergy who owned slaves. We had slaves that were owned by the missionary uh, organizations that were creating the Anglican churches here in the United States. And what's exciting about this list is, is that it's something Newport that historian Keith Stokes says Rhode Island merchants paid for ships to bring more than 100,000 slaves to the New World. Between 1705 and 1805, there are at least 900 documented slave ships that begin in Rhode Island and eventually end from West Africa, through the West Indies, and back to Rhode Island. It was called the Triangle Trade. They had rum distilleries in Bristol. They would take rum primarily, as well as other commodities, to the coast of West Africa to trade for men, women, and children, who were then brought back to be sold at auction, either in the Caribbean, and primarily that was in Cuba, or in the American South in ports like Charleston, South Carolina. The slave trade became a backbone of the American economy. All of this was tremendously important in building the economy of the North and what became the United States. In the colonial era, the slave trade and the provisioning trade to slave plantations in the West Indies um, were a key part of what allowed the British colonies to prosper and eventually to rebel against Great Britain and become an independent nation. At the time of his death in 1837, James DeWolf was the second richest man in America. After Rhode Island outlawed shipping slaves to North America in 1787, his nephew continued the slave trade illegally. George DeWolf was actively involved in the illegal slave trade after 1808. They appear to have stopped being involved by 1820 when Congress increased the penalty and imposed the death penalty for those who engaged in the slave trade. For the southern plantations, the African slaves brought skills useful in growing rice, tobacco, and cotton. Cotton that fueled northern textile mills, including in Rhode Island. James DeWolf heavily invested in the textile mills that turned the cotton into garments fueling America's Industrial Revolution. At the onset of the Civil War in 1861, there were four million enslaved Africans in the United States, a legacy the DeWolf family is trying to reconcile. It's incumbent upon me as someone with this kind of a family history and knowing about this history to speak out about what our family did and to help other people draw the connections to the ways in which their families are connected to slavery. If we bury the dark parts of a family history, if we bury the dark parts of a national history, we will start to assume things like that didn't happen and that will greatly distort our understanding of how we got here today. At the Bristol Cemetery, Katrina finds the grave of one of two family slaves owned by James DeWolf. So it's this horrible story of this image of two children being given as a Christmas present to one's wife. She was called Ajoa. Just being here makes me hope that she can hear us and that honor and recognition of their lives is something that can pass through the spirits. 
Chris Simpkins, VOA News, Bristol, Rhode Island.